Hey, I'm Justin Chamnitz, and welcome to the Real Estate Wholesalers Club, where we really do care about getting you to your first deal, getting to that shut up money, where all your doubts and fears and all the naysayers, you can walk right up and say, hey, listen, it works, shut up. Today, I'm talking about five characteristics of winning real estate wholesalers. Last week, we talked about five characteristics of loser real estate wholesalers, but today, we're going to talk about five characteristics of winning wholesalers. I want you to stay tuned all the way through to number five because it is the most important. It will make the biggest impact on your life, every aspect of it, but especially your real estate wholesaling business. Stay tuned. Hey, hey, we're back and we're talking about five characteristics of winner real estate wholesalers. These guys are winners. These gals are winners. These are the five characteristics that all winning real estate wholesalers have. Go ahead and do inventory on yourself and see which ones that you can, you know, improve on and which ones you can make yourself better in. And maybe, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, that one I'm horrible at. Well, hey, this is what we're here for. We're here to coach you and to help you into your first deal, into your success. And the biggest part of that is winning the inner game and getting over those mental hurdles, those, those, uh, those beliefs, that, that system of beliefs that just keeps messing you up over and over and over. Well, <laughs> we're here today to tackle some of those things. So we're talking about the five characteristics of winning real estate wholesalers. Let's get started with number one. Shut up, money. Yeah. The first characteristic of winning real estate wholesalers is that they are relentless. Relentless. Now, when you think of the word relentless, what pops up in your mind? Something that never gives up. They never die, right? This, <laughs> they're die hard. It's kind of like, I think of it in terms of Kanye West, okay? I think of it in terms of Kanye. Do you, you remember an, a, an old rap song that he put out and it was called Can't Tell Me Nothing? Now, I, I'm not talking about being arrogant or lacking the God-given gift of humility to be able to, to say, hey, you know, my knowledge is limited here. I'm not talking about arrogance I'm talking about being relentless you know it doesn't matter what you say you can't tell me nothing I've got a dream in my heart and I'm not going to be deterred from that you know there's an old proverb that says that a man that is double-minded is unstable in all of his ways in other words if you can't make up your mind you're you're you're, you're an unstable person you're like the waves of the sea being tossed to and fro you know like back and forth so you know don't be a double-minded person don't be a confused person be a focused person that has relentless tenacity to chase their dreams and what they're looking for and what they're going for in life. You know, there's going to be a lot of opportunities to give up. There's going to be a lot of opportunities to stop doing the things that you know that you need to do to be a success each and every day. And these 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 things that pop up, they're not always big things. You know, these, these opportunities to give up are not always big things. Sometimes it's the little tiny things that rob our times and our, our, our schedules and our, our, our intentions for the day get put to the, the back burner because because we have this and the other thing and all that. But, you know, get this relentless attitude. I want you to be relentless, relentless, like never give up, like a like a bulldog on a piece of bologna. Boy, once you give a bulldog, and I've got a bulldog, you give it a piece of bologna, you ain't getting it back. All right, be relentless like that. Let's get on to step number, the characteristic number two. Characteristic number two is, is that they have practiced and have some level of expertise with what I call mirroring. Mirroring. What is mirroring? Well, if you'll ever meet me in person, you'll find that I am an expert mirrorer. Okay. <laughs> I know this, there's a lot of errors in that mirrorer, but yes, I'm an expert mirrorer. And in other words, I, I'm good at making people like me. I'm good at making people feel comfortable around me because I've learned to mirror them. Okay, when you're on the telephone with someone and they they answer the phone and they they say hello, yes, my name is Joe and I'm calling about your ad or your text you sent me. Okay, when you when you get on the phone with somebody like that, I want you to pace them and mirror them. I want you to slow down your talk. Don't, don't be like, yeah, yeah, my name is Justin and I'm here to talk to you also about it. I'm glad you texted me back and let's talk about this. Yeah, okay, what, what I was really wanting to know is I got a few questions. You don't mind me asking you a few questions? Okay, let's get started. 
Okay, don't be like that with Joe. Joe is a slow talker. Okay, mirror Joe. Okay, when you're in person with, with, with person to person, face to face with people, what I call belly to belly. <laughs> when you're when you're face to face, belly to belly with people, I want you to mirror them. Okay, if if they're sit back, sitting back in their chair and they're they're rubbing their face, it's okay for you to sit back in your chair and kind of rub your face a little bit too. You know why? Because they they begin to unconsciously, you know, subconsciously see you doing things that that they're doing, and and something about that makes them feel less defensive about you and they like you so mirroring is a big humongous key to all sales but especially if you're going to be a networker if you're going to build a network and get people to like you and to know you and to love you and your brand and want to do business with you you're going to have to learn to practice the art of mirroring mirroring is simply just mirroring what that other person is doing you know so if they're slow talkers, then you're a slow talker. If they're a fast talker, then you pick up the pace a little bit and you want to talk. See, I don't talk fast very good. So when I when I'm on the phone with somebody that's talking super fast, you know, it, I do try to pick up the intensity of the pace of my voice, the meter of my voice, the rhythm of my voice. If somebody sounds super excited, then I want to talk super excited too. Okay, maybe even more excited. If somebody wants to talk, you know, like they're kind of down and they're slow talking and. Everything is like, oh, well, I'm not sure about this. Then you know what I'll do is I'll pace them and I'll, I'll, I'll come down in a couple notches and I'll be like, yeah, well, no, I, I completely, you know, I can really understand where you're coming from. And what I found is, is and a lot of people have felt the same way. And what they found is, is blah, 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 blah. See, I'm, I'm pacing them. And something about pacing people makes them more apt to communicate with you on a, on a more effective way, in a more effective way. It also helps to make them like you. So practice this. I want you to practice this with your spouse. I want you to practice it with your kids. I want you to practice it with your buyers and your sellers. I want you to practice with everybody because I want you to find that, hey, communication is really a two-way street. And uh, part of that is you. You know, So you've got to learn how to communicate well. And I know every Everybody wants to say, oh, well, I just want to get out there and be myself and the right people will love me and all that. Hey, bullshit, right? Okay. If everybody loved you just the way you are, just the way you do, okay, then you wouldn't be sitting here taking this class right now with me. <laughs> all right. So we need to be able to learn how to communicate better with other people. We need to learn how to be able to uh, to network and to, to fellowship with other people in ways that makes them like us. Okay. So mirroring is a big thing that winter wholesalers do. That was number two. Let's move on to number three. Shut up. The third characteristic of winning wholesalers, real estate wholesalers, is that they absolutely have an undying passion for knowledge. <laughs> All right. Now, I don't know if you would know this about me, but just a little glimpse into my life is I, I am a very, very voracious, studious person. OK, now I, I also speak against this. So hear me out. I don't want you to become a victim of YouTube University where all you're doing is learning, 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 learning and never putting anything into action. But I want you to become a very studious person or someone who likes to study and learn because you're always going to need to learn something new. You're, there's always going to be a new skill set or a new uh, set of knowledge or facts that you need to be able to incorporate into your business or into your life and into your thinking. And so I always want you to know, hey, you will always be learning. You will never arrive. You will never arrive. OK. And in fact, the more you learn, the more you realize that you don't know. OK. And what's even scarier, guys, is the more that you learn, the more you realize it's not the things that you don't know that really going to sneak up and get you. It's the stuff that you don't know that you don't know that's going to get you. So become a voracious, studious person. Become a a a hungry and a thirsty person, a person that thirsts for more knowledge and understanding, wisdom of how these things work and how you can better apply yourself to the wheel to make it roll better. All right. So that's number three. They have a voracious hunger and appetite for knowledge. Let's move on to characteristic number four of winning real estate wholesalers. Characteristic number four of winning real estate wholesalers is they think big. <laughs> they think big. All right. There is a mind shift that has to occur, guys. If you're used to getting a check every other Friday, 
All right, if you're used to getting a check once a week or whatever from your boss or from the payroll, okay, if you're used to that, there is a big mind shift that needs to occur inside you because being an entrepreneur, being a real estate wholesaler, being someone starting a business or a service business or a product business, uh, we have a service business here in the real estate wholesaler world, but being that person is going to require a shift in your mentality where you do not have to depend on a set routine of, hey, I'm going to get a check every other Friday. Now, this is a big, big hurdle for a lot of people. Now, how you overcome this is through thinking big and staying in motion, okay? You, you, you disconnect yourself from the dollar figures a little bit up here emotionally and in your mind, and then you just pursue activities that lead to checks, okay? And you'll, you'll create a check, you know, when you create a check, but I'm doing what it takes to get to a check, okay? It's about the focused activity, drawing a straight line from A to Z and getting there as quickly as possible. It's not about getting on a routine. Now, once that's, I'm talking about just getting started. Once you've got your business up and rolling and you have revenue coming in and you're doing deals on a regular basis, yes, then you can set yourself up on an every other Friday kind of thing. But that's, guys, this is not going to happen until you get out of the small-minded mentality that, that, that we're all oppressed with, for the most part, coming up as kids in our society. We're taught, hey, you know, we, we were told at one time, hey, you can do anything. You can be president of the United States if you want. But the reality is, is you know, we all learned somewhere along the way that we can't. <laughs> We can't do just anything, you know. I wanted to. Hey, I told my dad. Hey, I wanted to. I want to reach up and touch a cloud someday with my own hand, you know. Well, he said, Hey, that'd be pretty easy. You just got to get up in an airplane and stick your hand out the window, you know. I was like, Okay, well, then I want to go to the moon, okay, and I, I want to go to other planets, okay. Well, <laughs> there's some limitations on what I'm going to accomplish in my life. That is just the nature of life. But yet, I don't want to be so narrow-minded that I'm not trying to pursue anything outside my comfort zone, guys. Your comfort zone is your biggest killer okay your comfort zone is your biggest killer it's going to devastate your future if you do not do something outside your comfort zone and move yourself out of a place of comfort and ease to a place of uncomfortableness it's like it's like a, I'm reminded of an oyster in the ocean it, they say that an oyster uh, makes pearls because it gets a little irritating piece of sand in its uh, you know in its trap <laughs> and it just tries to spit it out and spit it out but it can't and so it just coats and coats and coats it with something that the the oyster makes and eventually makes a, por a pearl out of it, you know, which is of, of good value here, right? So, you know, I want you to be like that, you know, to get 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 uncomfortable with something and, and, and start thinking big. You know, if your goals aren't uncomfortable, well, I, God, I read my goals every day. And, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute, too. But I read my goals every day, and I find that sometimes when I'm reading them, I'm uncomfortable. You know why? Because you don't believe that you can do that yet. You don't believe you can do that yet. And that's exactly the feeling I want you to create for yourself. Start reading these goals, you know, putting these goals out in front of your eyes. We're going to talk about that in the next one. But, you know, they have your goals have to make you uncomfortable. OK, they got to make you uncomfortable. They got to stretch you. They got to be something that, yes, only you and a miracle can pull off. You know, because that's what's going to make you get out of the comfort zone of, hey, I got the bills paid every other Friday and get moved on to something bigger and better because there is something better than being on on the chain like that, guys. Now, I, I feel like I've bounced around a lot in number four. So let's just go ahead and move on to number five. But number four is definitely these these guys think big. You got to think big. You can't have small plans. You got to have big plans. You got to make these plans something worth having, guys. And then some. Characteristic number five of winning wholesalers is, is that they all write this stuff down. Guys, I heard a long, long, long time ago that only about 7%, maybe 9 of all of our society has some kind of a, a plan, a goal of, of, of some kind. Most people are just floating down through life. You know, but but only about nine percent have an economic plan at all. <laughs> all right, now here's an even better statistic. I heard that only three percent have any type of written plan, any type of written goals, objectives, purposes. All right, so immediately when I heard that, I equated that to well, they say there's a three percent of elite, and then the rest of us. 
And I wonder if it's the same 3% that's the elite that's writing down the goals and making the things happen. It seems like it, doesn't it? So how can I start today? Well, I started a long time ago. And let me tell you, it's been one of the, it's been absolutely, <laughs> outside of marrying my wife and having, having made my peace with God, it's really the best thing that I've ever done is writing down my goals. You, you might say, well, I don't know what to write down just yet. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're not decisive. Yeah. You're not relentless because you don't even know yet what you want. And writing it down will show you because when you write it down, you're going to get a gut feeling down in here. I talk about this gut feeling a lot, but you're going to get this gut feeling. Oh, yeah, these goals ain't the ones I wanted. These goals ain't the right ones for me. I, you know, I thought I wanted that, but now that I've written it down and looked at it for a couple of days, you know, I've decided I, I don't think that's what I wanted at all. I think I want this instead. Yo, go change the goals. Go write it down. You know, your book, you, you, you write it. You write that book every single day. Now, I write things down like this. I have goals. I keep mine on Trello. I keep mine on Trello and I'll take my phone and I'll look at them every single day and I'll read them out loud and I'll think about them and I'll, I'll figure out in my mind, is this really what I want? Is this how am I going to be? How am I going to feel when this happens? And sometimes I have to admit, you know, I don't think I'm going to feel as happy with it as I thought I was. So I better change some of these things. Yes, I'm, I'm refining. I'm refining my purpose. In, in all effect, I'm refining me. I'm refining my future. I'm looking at making something better out of myself and I'm, and I'm keeping score. I'm writing down and I'm changing as I need to change. But that's giving me more clarity every single time I do it. So get in the habit of writing this stuff down, y'all. That's number five. The characteristics of winning wholesalers is they write down this stuff right here yeah start today guys you know hey you might say well I got an app for that yeah apps are fine I use apps but I started with pen and pencil why do I say pencil because you're gonna want to erase some stuff okay and you're gonna want to go back so whatever works for you but the most important part is that you get it down get it down on paper because see right now it's just a thought it's an, un an intangible thing it's just a thought it's a piece of energy in your head and when you write it down, you're creating something tangible that can be felt and read. It's the first step to bringing an intangible thought into a tangible reality. All right, guys, that was the five characteristics of winning wholesalers. I hope you learned something there. I like these uh, coaches' corners type things. This is a series that I started on Mondays called Mind Over Matter. If you like us, please hit the subscribe button. We really do enjoy all the comments and posts of people that do participate in the chats and comment on our posts and our videos. And Go check us out at realestatewholesalersclub.com. There's lots of free training there for you, free modules, free agreements, free marketing tools, things like that to help you get started in moving forward without it costing you any of that do re me right you need to be able to figure out what you're up to you know what you're doing if this is really something for you before you go invest in four or five thousand dollars in somebody and I'm going to tell you right now it's a whole lot simpler it's a whole lot more simple <laughs> than you think guys check us out over there find us there at YouTube and Facebook as well real estate wholesalers club.com I love you guys lots of success I hope for you this week we've got lots of great things happening lots of students getting to their shut up money their first deal and I know that you can be next hey thanks for watching but don't forget to post introduce yourself tag a friend like us leave a comment subscribe share this video just do something don't just sit there there's all that money out there you got to get going get in motion this is motion real estate